Okay, welcome back. We're now going to start our third example for simple harmonic motion. This is still from the book Vibrations and Waves by George C. King. And this example may seem relatively unrelated compared to what we've been working with before, but I really like this example because it really highlights the, important, the importance of simple harmonic motion. So this example says that the potential energy, U of X, between two atoms in a diatomic molecule can be expressed approximately with the equation negative a over x to the 6 plus b over x to the 12th, where a and b are just constants. So for the first part of this problem, well, we, need, we need to do two things. We need to figure out what an expression for the force as a function of x, and we need to show that the equilibrium separation of these two atoms x naught is equal to 2b over a raised to the 1 6 power. So first things first, let's work on this force term. We're going to say that, we're going to approximate that this force is conservative, so we can say that the force of x is equal to the negative derivative of u with respect to x. So we're going to take the negative derivative of this term. So minus, this can become negative a, derivative of 1 over x to the 6 is going to be negative 6 over x to the 7th. So we're going to multiply this by negative 6, and this is going to become x to the 7th. And this right here, we're going to multiply by negative 12b, and this is going to be over x to the 13th. So now a minus a minus sign, this will become positive. But now we're distributing out a minus sign because we're taking the negative derivative of our potential. So if you do it all out, we'll get that the force of x is equal to negative 6a over x to the 7th plus 12b over x to the 13th. So there we have, we have our force term. Now let's try and find the equilibrium separation. What that's going to entail is, essentially, the, equili the equili yeah, equilibrium position is going to be the position where there are no net forces. So we can say that the equilibrium p position is going to be when x0 is when there's going to be no net force, or when this is going to be equal to zero if we have x of x naught. So if we plug in x is equal to x naught, this whole thing will go to zero. So we need to figure out what x naught actually is in this case. So let's first start off by bringing this term to the other side to make it positive. So we're going to get that 6a over x naught to the seventh is equal to 12b over x naught to the thirteenth. So we can multiply by x naught to the 13th on both sides, get all the x naught terms on one side, and then we can divide by 6 over uh, 6 times a on both sides, and we get that x naught to the 13th over x naught to the 7th is equal to 12b over a, uh, sorry, over 6a, and this becomes x naught to the 6 if we divide it out, is equal to 2b over a, and then if we take everything to the 1 6 term, really isolate this x naught, we get that x naught is equal to 2b over a to the 1 6, which is exactly what we needed to show. So that was the equilibrium position for when the net force is equal to zero. So now there's another part to this problem. The other part says that we have to show that the system will oscillate with simple harmonic motion when slightly displaced from equilibrium with a frequency given by radical k over m. Now, they're going to give us a reduced mass, and we essentially need to show in this next problem that k is going to be equal to 36 times a times a over 2b to the 4 thirds. 
That looks a bit tricky. But let's just take it step by step. In order to figure out what k is, or in order to show what k is, we have to recall all the way back to the mathematical definition of simple harmonic motion, where I said that we had, for the general example of a simple harmonic motion, we had one term that looked something like the second derivative of u with respect to x at its equilibrium position, x is equal to x naught. And for the mass and spring system, we found that we set this equal to k. So if we liken this system to a mass and spring system, and we need to try and find what the analogous form of this k will be, we essentially need to try and take the second derivative of our potential term and set our x is equal to its equilibrium term. So let's just do it out. It may seem relatively tricky once we get into the nitty gritty, but it should hopefully come out to this nice clean answer. So let me just rewrite the first derivative of u with respect to x. This is without the additional minus sign. That's going to be equal to, this was positive 6a over x to the seventh minus 12b over x to the 13th. Essentially what we did up here just without distributing this additional minus sign. So now let's take this second derivative with respect to x. So this becomes 6a times negative 7. So we're going to negative 42a over x to the 8th. And this is going to be negative 12b times negative 13. So that's going to be plus positive 156b over x to the 14th. And now we have to plug in x is equal to 2b over a to the 1 6. This looks a bit tricky, but we, I have a feeling we can do it. And to make everything nice and neat, I'm just going to... Let's just figure out what this x to the 8th term and this x to the 14th term is over on the side. So if we have x naught to the 8th, that's going to be equal to 2b over a to the 1 6 raised to the 8th, which essentially just 2b over a to the 8 6. And we can simplify 8, 8 over 6 with just 4 over 3. So we get that x naught to the eighth is just 2b over a to the four thirds. We can do the same with x naught to the fourteenth. That's going to be 2b over a to the fourteenth thirds, which is, no, sorry, to the fourteenth sixth, my bad, which is just 2b over a to the seven thirds. Now, let's plug in this down in here. Now, we're dividing by these terms, so we're going to essentially flip these terms. So we're going to get that our k, which is equal to our second derivative of u at x naught, equilibrium position, is equal to negative 42a times, uh, well, divided by our x naught to the eighth, which is essentially the same as times a over 2b to the 4 thirds. We've flip this because we're dividing by it. And this is going to be plus 156. Now, divided by x to the x naught to the 14th, which is the same as times a over 2b to the 7 thirds. Now, let's just simplify this out. Both these terms share a, well, this parentheses term to the 4 thirds. So what if we just factored that out? So we're going to k is equal to a over 2b to the 4 thirds times, if we factor that out of the first term, we're just left with 42a. And if we factor that out of the second term, we're left with, oops, I keep forgetting that this should be a b here. We're left with 156b times, uh, if we're left, if we factor out a, a to the a over 2b to the 4 thirds, we're going to be left with a over 2b to the 3 thirds, which is essentially just a over 2b. So now we're multiplying these together, so the b's will cancel, 
the 2 will cancel with the 156, we'll be left with 78. So now we can just simplify this up a bit. We, let's just uh, add negative 42a with 78a. We're going to get that our final k is equal to a over 2b to the 4 thirds times 78 minus 42, that's going to be 36a which is exactly what they wanted us to get up here. So that was a really, really unusual example, but I really like it for one reason. This potential that we started off with right here, this is known as Leonard Jones potential, or 612 potential. It is the potential that describes um, the interaction between two neutral diatomic molecules like what you find in like hydrogen gas. And essentially what we found is if you were to actually just plot out what this potential looks like as a function of distance, let's say here's x and here's u, the Leonard Jones potential looks something like this. Roughly, not exactly to scale. Where this x is just the separation between the two diatom uh, the two atoms. Now what this essentially says is here we have a nice little energy minimum. So about this energy minimum, that's going to, there's going to be a nice equilibrium position, and if you displace it, it's going to oscillate back and forth. Essentially what that's going to mean is these two atoms will come together, then they'll repel each other and go apart, then pull each other and come back together, essentially as if they were connected by a spring. So the reason I really like this is up till now, we've just been working with simple harmonic motion involved in macroscopic objects like springs, uh, pendulums, etc. But what this Leonard Jones potential shows is that to an approximation, simple harmonic motion is even involved even in microscopic things like diatomic molecules. In fact, I think it was, I think it was Einstein's approximation with crystals that said that He'll approximate crystals as just a bunch of solid atoms together, almost connected by, you could almost think of like springs. Uh, essentially showing that simple harmonic motion kind of applies to the microscopic realm. So essentially showing that the simple harmonic motion will come up over and over again. So I figured that'd be a nice way to end our little unit on simple harmonic motion we're now going to start our mathematical interlude and then hopefully get into dampened harmonic motion. So I'll see you in the next video.